Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're gonna to be talking about some romance books that have LGBTQ plus representation in them. I do wanna mention before we get into the video, I am not a part of this community. So if any of these books that I talk about are not good representation, please message me, please let me know. I do not want to promote a book that has poor representation. So I'm gonna be recommending books that have this representation in them that I love. Again, I'm not a part of this community, so please be gracious with me if it is not good rep. Please let me know, please be kind in the comments, and let me know also down below if these are some of your favorites as well. So the first one that I wanna mention is Wrong to Need You by Alicia Rye. This is the romance between Sadia and Jackson. Sadia is a widow and a single mother, um, and Jackson is her deceased husband's younger brother so it's a little messy a little messy in here but these two were childhood friends they were friends before sadia ever became friends with her husband and ended up dating him um and jackson had a crush on her throughout their whole childhood um but he didn't do anything about it um and so it's years later jackson has finally come back into town and he's ready to tell sadia how he feels about her this series is so good and so angsty i really recommend it if you have not read alicia rye yet what are you doing with your life um, but sadia in here is actually a bisexual woman and i loved her and the discussion of her sexuality and everything in here was very fascinating to read about um so i really really recommend this one next i have a fan favorite we have a lesson in thorns by sierra simone this book is so big look at it compared to my face Oh my word. This is actually only the first book that I've read in the series. I believe there's four books out. I've only read book one just because I heard people talk about the ending that was book two and it kind of like left people reeling. And so I wanted to wait till all the other books were out before I continued on. And I don't know my excuse now not reading it because all the books are out now. But anyway, this series centers around six, six, six friends. You have the heir, the dreamer, the priest, the genius, the socialite, and the saint. And they grew up together. Their parents were all very close friends and they ended up going on vacation every year to this specific place, but something drove their parents apart and they haven't been to this place in years. And so the children, they're all grown up, they're in their 20s, 30s, they decide to reconnect and meet at this place again. And it might be a little bit magical in a sense um, and mysterious and dark. And so it's kind of like a group situation with separate groupings with each person. So the sexuality in here is very fluid. I don't know the specific sexualities of every person in here. I don't even know if it's labeled for every person, um, but everyone is very open to everybody. There are three women and three men in here um, and they like to have fun together during this time. <laughs> I thought this book was really unique, very hot, very fun to read, and I really need to read the rest of the books. It's just book two made me a little scared, um, but I'm gonna push through, I'm gonna finally read them. Let me know in the comments which book in this series is your favorite if you've read all these books. Next, I have a paranormal vampire romance for you. We have Lover at Last by J.R. Ward. This is book number 11 in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. Yes, you have to read these books in order, please. This is a romance between Blay and Quinn. I'm not gonna go too much into it because it's book number, 11 um and i don't want to spoil it but these two grew up being best friends and they're kind of like vampire warriors now at this point and um this is their romance and them coming to terms with the fact that they're in love with their best friend and um one of the characters really denies this and really tries to push away his sexuality because of his family and what they believe but in the end, love prevails, okay? So there's a lot of triggers on here with homophobia, especially because of this vampiric society values perfection and thinks that homosexuality is not part of perfection, which is messed up. But of course the Black Dagger Brotherhood in here is very supportive, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like the hoity-toity people in the vampire world, um, which is where our um, one of the heroes' family is from. I love this one so much and i love their romance in here and how everything played out um because they go through a lot these characters go through a lot together and in the end their romance is totally totally worth it i love seeing them in like the later books being so lovey-dovey towards each other because that's not what was happening before this point <laughs> next i have it takes two to tumble by cat sebastian this is the romance between ben and philip ben is a vicar and he is in this town 
and he has been hearing about these children causing up a ruckus in this town. He's like, okay, I'm gonna check on these kids. What is going on? And so he goes to their house and realizes that like their parents are not there. They have like the household taking care of them. And so they're obviously looking for attention. And so Ben kind of makes it a mission of his to take care of these kids and like help discipline them in a sense, but also care for them, love them. But he does this without their parents knowing. Um, their mother is deceased and their father, Philip, comes back into the town. He is a sailor and he is a very damaged hero, very gruff, broody. He doesn't really like Ben at first because he's very attracted to him. Philip has had relationships with both men and women in the past. And so he's very fluid in his sexuality, I wanna say. Um, he loved his previous wife and then um, something happened to his previous relationship out at sea with a man, but he's very interested and attracted to Ben and he doesn't like that because in the society that was obviously very taboo, very forbidden, um, but the two of them might start up a little something something and it's even more, more, more forbidden because Ben is a vicar. <laughs> So, so there's a whole thing going on and I do love the incorporation of Philip's kids in here. I thought they were great. I also always pitch this book as like Sound of Music, but without the music and it's gay. And I love the sound of music. So if you love the sound of music, possibly pick this one up. Next time, There's for the Night by Katie Robert. This is the first book in her Twisted Hearts series. So this is the romance between Meg and Theo and Gallen. So uh, Meg is out one night, I think at like a, a club or something for her birthday. She comes across two men and they have a fun night together, all three of them. But she doesn't know that one of them is a prince to a royal country, like a, a prince prince, and the other one is his bodyguard. And so it's a very forbidden, very taboo. I've only read book one, I really wanna read the rest in the series, but this one is super hot, super fun. I think a great toe dip into the rest of the series because this little novella just is about their night of meeting each other and then the rest of the books like is about them dealing with the repercussions of her finding out that he's royal and everything. Next I have a trilogy for you. We have the new Camelot trilogy by Sierra Simone. Um, the first one being American Queen. I really recommend only reading American Queen. I don't really like the other two but I'm gonna mention the series overall because I know some people like the whole series. This series is basically about our heroine who is the daughter to a very wealthy influential man. And so then she ends up catching the eye of the president of the United States. They get married and everything. And it's an age gap between the two also. Um, he's way older than her, but he's also in a relationship with the vice president and she falls for the vice president too. So it's a triangle, an actual, I can't make a triangle, whoa. An actual love triangle because the guys get together, the heroine gets with one guy and the other guy. And so, and all of them are together at one point too. So this whole series is about the three of them trying to figure out their relationship and the ins and outs and forbiddenness to it all. Um, it's very entertaining though, very entertaining. Next I have That Kind of Guy by Tully Hibbert. This is the third book in the Ravenswood series. You can read this one on its own, I wanna say. This is the romance between Zach and Ray. Um, it's also an age gap romance. And also Ray in here has my chronic illness, my disability. I love seeing that in a book. Um, but anyway, Zach in here is the one in in the LGBTQ plus community. He is demisexual and he's just figuring out his sexuality at the beginning of this book. And Ray kind of asks him out and he kind of like has to tell her no. He's like, I'm still trying to figure out what I like in people in general. And so I don't think that is healthy for me. Can we be friends though? And she's like, of course. She's very hurt, kind of like embarrassed because he said no, but she still wants to be his friend, you know? Um, and so it's kind of like a friend's lover's romance because once he gets to know her and becomes friends with her, you know, he slowly starts to fall in love with her. This one was really good. There's also a fake dating aspect in here. Is is great. One of my favorite books by Talia for sure. Next time, Neighborly by Katrina Jackson. Um, this is a very interesting book. I don't even know how to describe it all that well. Um, but okay, so there are two couples in here, a man and a woman and a man and a woman. This one is married. This one is dating, okay? They own a house. They move into the duplex next to them. And the women, ooh, the women in this situation, in these couples are very attracted to each other. And the men, give them the go ahead to explore it. Okay, does that make sense? <laughs> this one was really fun, really hot. I read. I need to read more Katrina Jackson because like, this was so good. I love how like the men in here were totally like, okay, go for it to their partner. Like, 
I love to see it. Next, I have Bottle Rocket by Erin McClellan. This is the romance between Rosie and Leo. They were dating in high school, I want to say, and it's years later. Leo has come back to town. He is a very popular artist, and him and Rosie just reconnect and fall in love all over again. I love this. Um, this was really fun. Um, and it's kind of like set on the 4th of July too, um, which is kind of cool. Like each book in the series is kind of like centered around a holiday. Also, both characters in here are bisexual. So there is actually one of the hottest scenes I've read in this book um, was kind of like a group scene with like many people. And it was so, it was so fun. It was so fun to read. <laughs> so I really recommend this one and I need to read more Erin McClellan. She has a lot of good LGBTQ plus rep in her books. And the last book that I want to mention is Zenny by Rebecca Weatherspoon. This is the romance between Zenny and Mason and basically you read about, the, about in the book how and why but the two of them have to get in a marriage of convenience in order to get an inheritance. The two of them are strangers they don't know each other um so it's very awkward but also funny and cute at the same time they get in this marriage of convenience have to be married i think for like 30 days or a little bit more um in order to get this inheritance and they end up falling in love with each other and it is so cute and sweet we have a plus size hero and heroine and the hero is bisexual and he lets her dominate him at times and it is very good to read about is is good is good um rebecca weatherspoon's writing is really hot if you've not read one of her books yet please do anyways there you have it those are 10 recommendations for you please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can comment a rainbow emoji in the comment section down below anyways thank you all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.